Hymn 22 What is the new mystery, master of all things, that you have shown to me the profligate fornicator? What is this great marvel perceived within me, and not fully understood, but still hidden? For it is seen by me like a star rising from afar, and again it becomes like a great sun, not having measure, nor weight, nor limit in magnitude, and it becomes a little ray, and then a flame is seen in the middle of my heart and viscera, often turning around and burning all things within my guts, and making them into light. And so it uttered and taught in a friendly way to one who was entirely without means and seeking to learn. I am the sweet star whom you once heard is to rise from Jacob. It is I, do not doubt, and I reveal myself to you as a sun rising from afar, to be an unapproachable light for all the just, in the existence to come and in life eternal. I also reveal myself as a ray, and I am seen as a light by you, burning yet not consuming the passions of your heart, washing away your filth with the dew of sweetness, and my divine grace, and utterly quenching the coals of your body, sins of pleasures, and doing all by my benevolence, what I have also done of old in all the saints. Have mercy on the suffering one, pity the afflicted. May you not get angry at me, for again I wish to speak. How are you a star from Jacob, you who are utterly incomprehensible? How is it that you are and you become for everyone unto the present day? And how do you also reveal yourself as a rising sun, you who are nowhere and everywhere and above all creation, and also proclaimed as invisible to all? And how do you also become a ray and a flame seen by me? And how do you burn matter, being in essence immaterial? How do you bedew and wash the filth of my body, being entirely unapproachable fire and unendurable to angels? How do you envelop yourself with the corruptible essence of my body? And how, without confusion, do you mix with a human soul? How, through this soul in the whole body without confusion, do you, the intangible, deify me completely? Tell me, and may you not send me away, me the hateful and afflicted one. O oh, audacity, O oh, recklessness, O oh, words of folly, how do you not shudder to ask these things so abruptly? And how do you not perceive that you ask what you already know? But you dare to speak with God like one who tempts. And what you know, as though ignorant, you pretend to ask me. And you want to write openly your knowledge to everyone. But nevertheless, I endure you since I am benevolent. And again I teach you, saying these things to you. By nature I am inexpressible, infinite, without need, unapproachable, invisible to all, intangible, unfeelable, immutable by essence, alone in the unique all, and all one with everyone who recognizes me in the darkness of life. I am outside all the world, outside visible things, outside of the sensible light of sun and of darkness, of the place of punishments and of terrible condemnation, in which the arrogant servants fell, those who wickedly raised their heads against me, the Master. I am immovable, for where am I not, so that I could depart and take possession of another place? I am also ever moving without limit. Where would you go to search for me in order to find me there? At my word, the sky was brought forth like nothing. The sun, the stars, and the earth, like a little afterthought, came to be and likewise the other things that you see. The angels, having been introduced by me before the world, look at the glory of my glory from afar but not my nature itself. For I merely thought to bring about the powers, and instantly they were present, singing the praises of my mastery. But you who reside below in exile, where all the first transgressors fell, were Adam and with Eve your proto-mother, and the wicked devil who deceived them, where there is deep darkness, where there is a huge pit, where snakes are always biting your heels, where there is lamentation, woe, and endless remorse, where every desperation, anxiety, and sorrow, both death and destruction, overpower you all. How can you sit idle? How do you remain unconcerned? How can you be negligent? Tell me, how do you not worry about the evils that you have done in the world? And how do you not value repentance alone, 
and hasten to demonstrate sincere repentance, to inquire about it with much entreaty, and to investigate carefully how you may accomplish it, so that you may be able, through repentance and by my benevolence, to receive great forgiveness of your crimes. By abandoning this repentance, you seek things above nature. You inquire about things in the heavens, but not even those. Rather, you search out my nature, as was said, I who made heaven and all things as nothing, and you desire to learn things concerning me, as no one else knows. O oh, the wonder, O oh, the ambition of a human! For even if I found fault with you, still again I shall praise you, because you also are my work in creation how you were formed from earth, from clay, from dust, how you live with dust and you are conquered in it. Do you reckon it all as nothing? Do you regard it like a shadow? And do you disregard all and seek only me? You wish to speak about me, to describe on my account, to see me, if possible, through the whole of your life, and not to taste sleep or eat or drink, or to be concerned about clothing of the body in general. But as if they were trees and woods standing along the road, so do you reckon all honors of the world. And you disregard them as nothing in the path of life, not turning the vision of your intellect, nor allowing the eyes of your soul to look toward these things. But you imagine and call to mind only me, and you love me like none of those living with you. For who, by my name, gladdens their heart and immediately rises to love or desire? Who, often hearing my remembrance spoken, has taken only me to heart and wept from their soul. And who has sought to learn and to keep my divine words or my commandments with zeal? Who, like you, considered me God above all and promptly desired to serve me and on account of this has disregarded parents and brothers and home and likewise relatives and neighbors and friends and so has come to me, as though not seeing any of them, as though not having discovered on earth any person in the world, but like a stranger treading a foreign country or city that has barbarians and everyone speaking a foreign tongue, thus among living companions, acquaintances, and friends, private citizens and princes and the wealthy of the world, and happens to be settled and living in their midst. But to the insensitive these are small and bare sayings, but for me, their overseer, they are great and sublime. Who among the great ones of the earth of the authorities and thrones, or of those who claim to govern and reign through me, or those who appear to hold the place of my divine apostles, who has either considered this or been able to keep it, so that in the time of keeping my commandments and law they see one person just like all, relatives and strangers, wealthy and poor alike, famous and obscure, and all the powerful along with the common. Who is the one who has judged dispassionately, looking upon them evenly. If I should find a soul keeping these things in the world, especially in the present day and generation, I shall glorify them equal to my apostles and prophets, and they shall sit with me in my advent. For then they shall judge justly like the apostles did on earth, and they will gain the glory of the judge of the dead and the living. That is what is good to seek and to observe the rest with them, and as much as one can to keep them meticulously. And it is better not to search out my nature, son of man, nor the energies of my Holy Spirit, how he is revealed as a sun, how he is seen as a star from afar, where being revealed and passing over the mountains and being hidden from your eyes, procuring for you inconsolable affliction and suffering. And when you think he will no longer be seen by you, he is found within, somewhere in your heart, and apportioning astonishment and joy for you unexpectedly because he shows himself to you as a flame, and he is seen as a ray and a fire. Do not be amazed, nor examine him, for this is not good for you. And so believe that I am utterly formless light, completely simple, uncompounded, indivisible by nature, at the same time inscrutable, inaccessibly accessible. For I am truly seen, I am benevolently shown according to the receptivity of each human being. When I change form, it is not I who experience the change, but those who see are deemed worthy to see me in this way. For otherwise they are not able to see me, nor do they receive any more. And because of this they sometimes contemplate a sun when they have a purified mind, and sometimes a star when they find themselves under the gloom and night of this body. 
and the boiling over of love makes me a fire and a ray. For when the charcoal of affection has been inflamed, then I also see the eagerness of your heart. I am found united to it, and I provide light, and I am revealed as a fire, I who created the fire by a word. For the virtues of the soul lie underneath like firewood. The divine light of the Spirit takes hold in these virtues, and is named according to the underlying of the firewood. For the light has no particular name among humans, and so when a person is stung with compunction and weeps, then the Spirit is also called water, for he also cleanses. He is united to the tears. He washes away filth. And when remorse quenches the rage of the heart with his cooperation, he is called meekness. But again, when one is inflamed against impiety, this too comes about through him. It is called zeal. And again, peace and joy and kindness, it is said, because each is given to the one who mourns, and he makes joy bubble up in the heart like a fountain. From this, all sympathy and mercy is poured out, flowing from the soul to everyone, most of all to those who wish to repent and to be saved. For he has mercy on all, but with the latter he concurs, and cooperates with, and unifies, and suffers with them in all things. Being united in their soul by free will, and he judges by the mind the beauty of their repentance, he attains a most true love toward them, and he is called humility, as all things of the world, even the soul herself and one's own body, and all practice they believe become as nothing when a person has tasted his sweetness, and looked upon the impossible beauty of his light. Having seen these things, may you no longer beg of me to speak or to explain fully about such things to you. Having seen these things, may you no longer beg of me to speak or to explain fully about such things to you, for they are by nature inexpressible, utterly unspeakable, and forbidden to humans, unknowable even to angels, and wholly incomprehensible to any other created essence at all. But may you know only things about yourself, or much better, know thyself. And then you shall know that since I am by all means unattainable, I interact with and I love only those who love me, and those who always remember fervently my commandments, and those who never prefer anything else that flows their way. I shall live and converse with them now and forever. Amen.